Hey, I'm Doc, and welcome to the Midnight Chronicles, where we discuss anything and everything paranormal. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Today, I'm joined by Vanessa, and she uh, joins me from the great state of Ohio. So, uh, Vanessa, welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Um, for the record, it is not the great state of Ohio. Anybody and everybody who lives here wants to flee. So, yes, the memes about Ohio are mostly true. <laughs> okay. Uh, when... Uh, when it comes to Ohio, usually people, uh, at least people in the paranormal field, they usually think of the Ohio grass man. But uh, we're here to discuss another cryptid that, uh, cryptid that lives there. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that area, the Dayton, Germantown area? Exactly which paranormal thing are we talking about? Ohio's got quite a few things. Poltergeists, shadow entities, ghosts, specters, of course the... Stories of the the dog man, wolf man, werewolf. Mm -hmm. There's the uh, there's also the witch that walks by the Great Miami River at night. Um, I mean, there's lots of uh, paranormal stories in Ohio. We got quite a few houses. We got quite a few houses that are haunted. Mm -hmm. I lived in one. Two two. I lived in two haunted houses in the Ohio area. Okay. Um, I kind of need to know. What exactly we're talking about? Uh, the Germantown werewolf. I've known it as the Germantown werewolf, the Germantown dogman, and the Germantown wolfman. Mm-hmm. All three. It's all three the same entity. Mm-hmm. Um, it's said to by Native Americans. It is said to be a curse that was placed upon the land between the two rivers mm-hmm. by early Native Americans. Okay. Um. So. Typically, at least at the time I heard about it, it was known to roam from the Germantown area or even farther out. I hadn't talked to anyone farther out than Germantown, but it's said to roam from side side to side the entire area of the land between the Little Miami River and the Great Miami River. Okay. And what do people typically describe when uh, when sighting this creature? Um, there have been a number of different ways it's been brought to my attention. Um, some older gentlemen from Germantown said it looked like uh, a dog man covered in fur and yellow eyes with pretty much a red pupil. Okay, okay. Um, another elderly gentleman in another group said it looked kind of closer to a hellhound, which was a unique way for it to have been described to me. Mm-hmm. Um, again, there's stories of it being looking like a werewolf. Um, some descriptions have it described as more of a humanoid with dog features. I mean, um, I've heard it called a hellhound on a couple of occasions, which was, again, interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, do they give any any descriptions as to, um, like, uh, what the fur color is? Um, usually black. Mm-hmm. Some said it was black with a reddish tint. Right. Um, a couple who had seen it in the daytime said it looked more like fire. Okay. That was interesting, but the main thing they said was that the very distinctive yellow eyes with the red pupil was piercing. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty uh, common um, description of dogman creatures. Um, are you aware that Ohio is a um, is a hot spot for uh, dogman activity? Yes, very much so. There have been stories from, like I said, the dogman story dates back to early Native Americans who lived in the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, that in Illinois and, of course, uh, Wisconsin and Michigan and uh, down into Tennessee and um, Kentucky. I mean, uh, it's it's a pretty big hotspot, that area for dogman activity. Um, Can you recount any story? Go ahead. Sorry. um, Much like Connecticut, um, the area I live in and have lived in most of my life Mm -hmm. has been a hotspot for... paranormal activity for far longer than anyone wants to admit openly these days yeah um can you recount any like uh, stories that the old timers uh told you about these dogman creatures um the the one that sticks out to my mind and i was younger at the time and in more recent years people have shut up about all the paranormal stuff that goes on in ohio but at the time it was like if you didn't know about it you lived under a rock hmm. Yeah. Um, the guy was from Germantown. Uh, he was like a third or fourth generation farmer, something like that. He, his family had lived on the land, land they owned for years. Yeah. And the Germantown werewolf, the dog man of Ohio, whatever you want to call it, had come up in casual conversation, which 
again, not unusual in this area. Um, at the time we talked about it, like it was like we were talking about the water cooler about it. Mm-hmm. And this old, this older gentleman was like, these young fools moving out to the Germantown area because they were starting new development at the time. I don't know what it looks like these days, but it was very much farmland and rural and, you know, just not city. Mm-hmm. So this old, this old timer's like, these young fools don't have any respect for the land whatsoever. Mm-hmm. They're gonna, they're gonna aggravate this dog man is how it was referred to, this dog man creature that runs in packs. Mm-hmm. And these young fools ain't gonna respect it. Yeah. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he could tell I was curious. And he said, well, my family's been on this land for as long as I can remember. And you always respected the dog man's territory. Uh, he wouldn't even chase a sheep or a pig or a goat if it went into its territory. Like that animal was now property of that entity or that pack of entities. He said there was a fine balance as if there was an unspoken rule between these dog men and these farmers that its territory was its territory and their territory was their territory. And if you start messing up the balance, he thought things could go hella wrong. I think on um, Germantown nowadays, um, I don't know, I haven't seen it on any maps in quite a while, but I think uh, it's off. It's pretty developed nowadays, isn't it? I'm not sure. Probably with the way everything's going as more developed, it could probably, it could be a small city for all I know right now. Yeah. Um. So the locals around there are they pretty open about this? Um. This werewolf that they see around there. Um. Used to be. I don't hear people nearly talking as much about it as I as they used to. Like it's now some sort of secret. You don't want people to know. Mm-hmm. But at least to. <laughs> two generations back they were talking about it interesting and as i understand it as we spoke about in the pre-interview um you had an encounter with this entity haven't you yeah i did can you tell us a little Um, bit about that oh of course it was it was around midnight actually i was i'd had a bad day my father and i had fought and just the house i lived in was feeling oppressive i felt kind of sick and i thought you know what i'm gonna get out of here for a little bit so i went down by St. Anne's Church, which was like literally right next door to where I lived. So it was a small walk and I started heading down to the uh, Circle K, which was much further down. I got two, three streets over. I was uh, walking, enjoying the quiet night. There were no cars. You didn't hear the dogs barking, which you knew there were dogs in the area. They were always barking, which Mm. again was this night was kind of odd because they weren't even barking as I was out and about. It was kind of a weird night altogether. I was just walking to clear my head. I got down by, a, I think it's Paul Young Funeral Home, which is about three streets up. And I started hearing this disembodied, ethereal, kind of echoey bark all around me. And I looked up the street toward, you know, where Jim's Corner Market used to be. And I looked down towards, you're heading to the Great Miami River. There was no dogs. I looked straight ahead of me and behind me. There were no dogs. There was no car. No other dogs started barking. And it was loud enough it should have alerted other dogs. And something felt weird. I felt I felt like I had to get out of there. But before I turned and left, up ahead, and if you've ever heard a dog run in silence, you hear the paw prints. You hear the footsteps on the pavement mm-hmm. or on the sidewalk very easily. Yeah. And I know that because I've owned... A dog and I currently have a dog and it just I mean as far up as it was you would have seen the dog and then I heard the bark again down the road towards the middle of the road as I was standing on the sidewalk up ahead I'd have seen a dog there was no dog and I'm like I'm out and I pretty much ran back home okay uh, what exactly did it sound like um did it uh sound like a like a regular dog dog bark or you know was it more bassy did it have more bass to it uh what exactly did it sound like it sounded like it was a big dog Hmm. like if you've ever heard like a i don't know what the dog's called offhand but it was deeper than a husky um but it the weirdest part was it wasn't threatening it was just like a loud bark letting you know it was there but it scared the hell out of me because there was no dog it was loud it was ethereal it was echoey i mean you could even without knowing what kind of dog it was or that you could tell it was not of this world whatever it was there was no dog yeah. 
could you I feel, mean it so- could you feel it like I felt something I felt something, but it didn't seem like it was interested in me. I mean, like, did you, like, feel a vibration from the howl, or... I didn't hear a howl. I heard a bark. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the bark. Yeah. Did, could you, um, could you feel it? Like, was there, like, a vibration to it? Uh, it, it was echoey, like it was reverbing. You told me in the pre-interview, um, that, uh, one of your classmates that you were going to school with at that time, they actually did see the creature, uh, later on that night after you heard the howl. Correct? After I heard the bark, yes. Yep, yeah, sorry. I um, calling the hell, yeah. Now, um, now uh, it was, like, I was walking fast that night. I was back by 12.05. Because, like I said, after I heard the bark twice, and I realized it wasn't interested in me, it was heading towards the Great Miami River, mm-hmm. I turned and ran. I turned and ran. And I went home and decided to deal with the paranormal in the house instead of whatever was going on outside. Okay. So you were you were you were under the impression at that time that it was something paranormal. Oh yeah, there was something weird going on that night. What it was, I don't know. There was a lot of paranormal activity that night. Okay, and like I was saying a second ago, um, you told me in the pre-interview that after you you had he- you heard these barks, that um, a classmate of yours the day after told you that they had seen what you assume is the creature that made those barks. Well, the reason I assume this, and it's a logical assumption, is um, I have always, since I was young, carried a cell phone on me. And so after I heard the bark, I checked the phone and ran, I ran back to the, uh, I ran back to the house. Mm -hmm. And so I kept, uh, I kept pretty good track of time. And, the reason I am saying it's the same entity is because it would have been not even 30 seconds after I had heard the uh, two barks that it was down by the Miami River. I mean, it was less than 30 seconds later. It was in the same minute. Yeah. And yeah, I know dogs run fast, but um, I've never seen a dog run that fast. What did your friend tell you that they had seen? They had heard the uh, dog man, wolf man, werewolf howl. And they had seen the, they hadn't seen the creature itself because it was so dark, but mm-hmm. they had seen um, yellow and red eyes. Okay. And so we're talking about less than a minute apart. Mm-hmm. So I had seen it and about 30 seconds later, somebody else had, or I had heard it and about 30 seconds later, somebody else saw it. Okay. And um, uh, it, the person had said that they had, they had only seen one set of eyes, but it seemed like shadows were converging that night. Okay. Where, where exactly did this happen at? Um, it was by it was in Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, I heard the bark by Paul Young Funeral Home, heading down a small twisty road down to the Great Miami River, and I think that's Joyce Park right there. Don't mm-hmm. quote me. I haven't been in that area much in a while. And the sighting was near Joyce Park by the Great Miami River. Okay. How far is Hamilton away from Germantown and Dayton area? About an hour, it's about an hour from Germantown. I don't know the okay. time for uh, Dayton off the top of my head, but it's all within the dogman, wolfman, werewolf territory. All right. Um, so are you familiar with uh, the Dayton Howls? Um, they, uh, I don't have the recording here. But, um, there were some howls that, um, the residents of Dayton were, um, were complaining about. Um, and I think it actually made the newspaper about it. Um, and I think they were actually recorded as well. Like I said, I don't have the recording here, but are you familiar with the Dayton house? Was there, I, I was there, I was alive and listening as the story developed. Okay. And, uh, you have some information about the Dayton house that you think. Um, you think that, uh, something else may have been, uh, responsible for those, right? Um, indeed. Um, I don't know if it was ever printed or whatnot, but, or the recording kept, but, um, as the Dayton howls were investigated, yes, there were some strange howls that were recorded. There were Mm -hmm. some strange things seen, but, um, they called in a, a scientist who's basically a canine expert. And, um, also at that time, uh, it was come to find out there were actually, there were actually wolves in Ohio. I'm not sure what happened to them, 
But um, around the same time, there was a huge dog fighting ring in Dayton. So they were breeding all kinds of dogs. They were breeding pretty much everything with wolves and then crossbreeding that with other things. I mean, they were trying to make some really, I mean, pit bulls, I mean, huskies, um, you name it. They were trying to make a super aggressive dog. Yeah. Um, so when the scientist came, when this canine expert was called in, this canine scientist, as they called him, and they busted up this ring, they didn't catch all the dogs. They did not catch all the dogs. All these crossbreeds and a few of the wolves escaped. Hmm. Uh, but that's that's all you heard about the wolves is some of them escaped, and then there was nothing about it. They went on to some political scandal the next paper. Okay. And what this and what this scientist said was that. He had heard some howls that were not of nature. There were these crossbred dogs that should have never been. Hmm. The breeds were not the breeds were not released, but he said, I have heard some things and while there may be some dogman howls in that mixed in, he couldn't tell you because of he didn't believe some of the barks and some of the howls he heard when he went in to try to identify all these different dogs. Okay. So I do, you know, like I said, I don't have the actual Dayton Howells uh, recording here, but I do have some uh, allegedly real Dogman Howells that I'm getting ready to play here in a second. Uh, these were caught about 20 miles outside of the LBL, uh, the Land Between the Lakes, which is a recreational area um, between... Um, the I think the uh, Kentucky and uh, and Tennessee border. Uh, these are alleged uh, real dogman howls. Getting ready to play them. And uh, Vanessa, you, th- you I, I played them for you before. You think you've heard these before? Uh, having listened to the recording myself, yes, I've heard them. Okay. All right. Well, here they are. Um, we'll catch you guys back here in a second. <laughs> Here they are again. So, Vanessa, you think that, or not think, but you've heard those before? Not my life. Where have you heard them? Downtown. Downtown. Um, da- uh, Hamilton, downtown Hamilton, um, over by Wilson, over by, Ham- which is over by Hamilton High. I mean, I've heard them throughout my life in different parts of the town. What did you think when you heard them? Um, well, despite knowing the, uh, obvious that dogman, wolfman, werewolf, uh, we've got good number of coyotes. But so when I heard them at different times of the year, I didn't really think much of it because of all the different creatures that we have. We have wolves that escaped. We have had weird combinate weird breeds of dogs that have escaped i mean for me it's hard to pin what anything actually is okay yeah well a lot of people um by the way those um howls were actually like i said were recorded outside of the uh lbl or land between the lakes recreational area and uh where 
a lot of people would probably say that they were wolves or um yeah most people would say they were wolves uh there are no wolves anywhere close to the land between the lakes so whatever was making that howling um is unknown you know and uh you said that you've heard these before uh do you remember or do you recall what time of year that you that you heard those year round year round okay I mean, I've heard them in the summertime, I've heard them in the fall, I've heard them in the winter, you know, spring. Yeah. Well, Rarely during the day, mostly at night. Okay. Um, what sort of an area did you hear them in? Like, uh, how would you uh, describe the area that you've heard them in? Um, there were a few times, again, by Wilson. I don't know if it's still there, but there's like a creek and some woods. I've heard it in that area. Hmm. Um, I've heard it in a city park. I've heard it, which sound quite a ways off, just in the distance in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the closest I'd say I ever got to the dog man, wolf man, werewolf was the night I heard those disembodied barks that literally came from nowhere. Yeah. They, um, uh, if you, if you ask, go ahead. I'm sorry. You first. Yeah. They're, um, at least as how they've been described and, um, encountered, um, Dogman, uh, it's a fascinating phenomenon. These things, um, they, they tend to, um, you know, they, they lurk by usually, like, uh, you usually, you know, people usually see them near, like, uh, large, uh, forests, like a large forested area with, uh, creeks, but, you know, they've been, um, sighted also in, um, uh, you know, in, like, nearby city limits, like Chicago, and, you know, it's just a very fascinating thing, you know, a very fascinating ph- phenomenon, you know, and, um, uh, in some later shows, I've got some more eyewitnesses coming that, uh, um, that we'll talk about their experiences with these these entities. Um, Vanessa, I'm I'm just very interested to to ask you, uh, what do you think these things are? And there's no right or wrong answer, you know. Just uh, what do you think they are? Back, it, speaking from an Ohioan's point of view, not speaking from anybody else's. Um, the 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 big question I've had living in Ohio that has never been answered: What cursed the land between the rivers? Early counts from Several of the Native American tribes that were known to roam this area have said that the land was cursed. It was cursed when they got here. So the question is, who cursed it, or were they already here? And it's, as this, go ahead, sorry. <clears throat> and as phenomenon, as we talked a bit in the pre in the pre mm, interview, yeah. um, this has become worldwide. So. That being said, uh, if the Ohio land was cursed between the two rivers far beyond early Native Americans, and if old time, older farmers in that who have, who apparently lived alongside these creatures, because as a story I was told said that you didn't cross into its territory, that there was a respect and an understanding. Have we caused this ourselves because we have gotten out of sync with the land? We continually been tapping into something we ought to have left alone. Do you um do you know if uh sightings are still ongoing of this creature in that area? As far as I'm aware, yes. <clears throat> well, Vanessa, it's been a pleasure to have you here on the show and to speak with you and uh to get uh your insight into this phenomenon. Um the dogman creature itself, it's, like I said before, it's a very interesting and fascinating phenomenon that is going on. And it's, uh, you know, the, the traction on it is growing. Uh, we've got shows up on YouTube that are popping up all the time about it. Documentaries are being made about it. Um, you know, uh, and it's just a very fascinating uh, phenomenon that people are seeing these upright walking canines that just have these um, just have this uh, this this um, aura about them that 
is just extremely terrifying to the point that people suffer from PTSD. You know, I have, I have no idea what to think about it. But, I, you know, the thing about it, too, is that um, in the past, there have been um, reports of these things as well. People have been seeing them all well into, um, you know, well back into uh, colonial days. They were seeing these things. I mean, you had, like, French fur trappers that were saying that they saw the loop guru, you know, the uh, the French werewolf, you know, the French trappers were coming down from Canada and uh, Michigan and down the Mississippi. And, um, you know, you got the uh, down into Louisiana, you got the Rougarou, you know, which is supposed to be a werewolf that's down there. And then you got the Michigan dog man and the beast of Bray Road and the beast of the land between the lakes and, uh, the, these sightings they keep going on and you know i think now that the internet is around and these people have can you know they have connections with uh i think before people wouldn't talk about these things you know that they've seen but uh now that the internet is around and people can connect with other eyewitnesses that have seen the same thing that they have um they see these things and they're able to report their stories easier, you know, in a more accepting climate. Uh, and um, kind of like how Bigfoot nowadays is, it used to be a very taboo subject, and in some areas it still is. But people are more willing to come forward about um, uh, Bigfoot now, being that it's more socially um, not taboo to have seen a Bigfoot. I've seen one myself, um, and I felt very comfortable, and I still feel very comfortable coming forward just saying that I did see one. Um, the Dogman subject, though, I think is, is still kind of in its infancy uh, phase, and uh, but people are feeling more and more comfortable to come out and talk about it, um, which is why I asked you about the, the, the climate there at Germantown and Dayton. I wanted to know, um, how people felt, uh, how comfortable they were, they were with coming forward about this thing uh, that they've seen. Um, but yeah, it's a very fascinating subject. And, uh, again, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your insight into it and your experience. I really do appreciate it. I oh, and I'm going to leave with this parting thought. It was always thought that you could live in harmony with it. Um, old-time farmers definitely um, had seen the creatures and were well aware of their capabilities in that. It was like, you stay on your side of the fence, I'll stay on mine. Yeah, um, are you familiar with the, uh, the... I think there's a video about it here on YouTube. Uh, the the story about the the siege of uh, what is it siege of uh, Lockhart Ranch I think uh, I think is what it's called is it down in Taylor Miss Mississippi but um yeah there was a there was a ranch or um, homestead down there farmstead um, that um, it was on the border with these things and uh, it was on the border with the territory of these things. And, um, the, they breached it, you know, the farmers and the family breached that and, uh, somehow really, um, uh, made the, the dogmen of that area mad and they, they ended up, um, see, uh, undergoing a siege with these things. These things were, uh, basically trying to break their way into the home and, um, they ended up actually having to flee the ranch and, uh, the, the farmstead that they had there and, um, uh, just, uh, completely abandon it and, uh, and, uh, it was really sad, but, you know, like what you were saying, you know, I, I don't think that they were, you know, I think they, they crossed the threshold of something that they didn't understand and they felt the repercussions of it, and uh, it's a it's a really harrowing tale, very uh, 
extremely harrowing and um and uh I'm I'm really surprised that um they got out with their lives. I mean, you know, it tore up the entire farm and really I mean like I think at some point like the dogmen, you know, during the siege were trying to actually like dig underneath the floorboards to get up and and to get these people and it's you know they they killed all the livestock and they killed um I think one of the worst parts I think in my mind was they killed the uh the family dog that was trying to defend the the family and it yeah I don't I don't remember exactly what it was called but it was I think it was a siege of Locker Branch or something like that yeah um if you haven't heard that, I would suggest you go check that out. But yeah, I, that when you're telling me about how these farmers lived in harmony with these things, um, just brought that to mind. Yeah, these areas been known for generations. So the story gets passed down, and I, I, before it happened, speaking of it, I heard a couple of farmers i don't remember their age but um they were talking about a new farm being built um what looked like pristine farmland and i didn't make a connection until much later that it could be the same farm because uh these farmers said there's a reason certain pristine land isn't touched you're asking for a heap of trouble i think is how we put it and that's one reason as you know, you tell me more and more of these stories come out and more and more of them are happening. I think inadvertently as a people, we have crossed some sort of unspoken rule and we have pretty much pissed things, things off beyond belief. Do you think that uh, the dogmen and uh, like uh, Sasquatch, do you think that they saw, they share the same territory or do you think that um they um kind of avoid each other uh by reports of both uh the sasquatch and the dogmen i don't think they overlap because um sasquatch tends to roam the woods and tries to pretty much stay away from people mm -hmm. the dogmen yes are in some woods but uh, or some of the areas they're seen in are towns and farmland type areas. Mm -hmm. Places you want to, you know, build up. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they overlap, which is interesting come to think about it. Yeah, there are multiple, um, reports. Uh, the land between the lakes is one, um, where, uh, the, uh, the dogmen, they stay on one side, you know, of the park, whereas the, at least it's reported, allegedly, um, the, they stay on one side, and the Sasquatch stay on the other. Um, I mean, it's like that throughout multiple areas of the world, or at least of the country, I don't know about the rest of the world, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's reported a lot like that, whereas these things try to, um, avoid each other, or they've got, a, like, a territory marker, or, like, this river, you stay on that side of the river, we'll stay on this side of the river, and, um, and they don't bother each other. But, then again, you get other reports where, um, you, you see them fighting with each other, and then you get other reports as well that I've gotten... Um, where it seems like they're working together. So it's, you know, who knows, you know, who knows what that means or how they interact with each other. I just thought it would be interesting to kind of pick your brain a little bit about that. If you've lived here, if you've lived in this world and you've talked to anybody, there's exceptions to every rule. Yeah. Now, can I see... Sasquatch and Dogmen, Wolfman working together? Yeah. Could they be outlaw? Could the Dogmen be outliers from their pack and the Sasquatch not 
be accepted in their society, whatever it may be. Yeah. What do outliers do when they've got nothing better to do? They team up. True. Them fighting? Somebody crossed something they ought not have. Yeah. Somebody chased something they ought not to be. And they're fighting over something or another. Yeah. But if you look, people are the same way. Yeah, that's true. Oh. You have outliers get together. You have those of a similar flock going together. You have people who don't really belong that flock together. I mean, people, entities and that, they take each other in. For better or for worse. Do we know what that means for us? Not exactly. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on this show. Vanessa, I really do appreciate it. Uh, well, I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much, Doc. No problem. No problem. I am Doc, or DJ Doc, as you might know me from XSC Radio. Uh, this has been an episode of the Midnight Chronicles. Again, Vanessa, thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll see you guys back here again in a couple weeks. Thank you so much. Good night.